It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so, uh, as advertised, I'm, I'm Chris Wiggins, uh, professor here. Click. Good. Uh, and I said that I would talk today about bridging the gap and about hacking the future of New York City. So, first of all, and if you'd like to know more, I've made a bit.ly bundle with all the references today, bit.ly slash TEDxCE2013. So first, let's talk about the gap and what I mean by the gap. What I mean by the gap is, uh, right now, in higher education, uh, we bring all of you to some of the best universities in the world. And we do that in order for you, or to help you, forge your role in the world. But to help you forge your role in the world, part of what academia does is remove you from it. And I'm concerned about the gap that academia has between the academy and the way we train you for the world and what happens when we release you onto the world. And I have some evidence that perhaps that gap is a little larger than it needs to be. That maybe in academia we've reified a type of academic exceptionalism and that somehow what happens in the academy is not done by human beings or is somehow not applicable and won't help you once you leave here. Uh, yes, so in order to prepare you for the world, in some ways you leave it when you come to the academy. So here's some evidence that there is a bit of a gap. Uh, and that gap, uh, the evidence is in the consequences when people leave here. Uh, so here's a nice article from Ezra Klein about how people graduate and they feel like they don't have any better ideas about where to go than finance. And he says in particular that suddenly your junior or senior year, you find that you don't feel like you have skills pointing to the obvious next step. Now, note that uh, Ezra Klein is not saying that you don't have skills or that you have the wrong skills, but that somehow many of these students graduate feeling like their skills don't obviously point to something and they're not sure where to go next. So you may think, oh, well, this is a problem with the liberal arts and somehow in tech it's, it's fine and awesome. Uh, not so much. Uh, so you might wonder, well, is it better in tech? So in tech, there's also evidence of a gap between what we are teaching you and what happens when students leave Columbia. So here's a disturbing article, disturbing to me, from last summer uh, by the senior vice president of people at Google, who said that in fact, the way you perform at Google or how well you perform at Google is completely unrelated to how well you performed in school. And in fact, the skills required in college are very different than the skills required to succeed in Google, which is disturbing to me because my day job is teaching you those skills. And so I would like to believe that the skills I'm teaching you are useful for something. Uh, so, Many people have said there's problems in academia. What sort of answer might we point to? One answer is a little thing called the internet. Some people are wondering if maybe we need to replace the college experience with a college experience that's uh, online. I beg to differ. So I think that there's something special about all of you physically being here in college. Uh, and as I put it last week, uh, there's a type of learning that we do in classrooms and there's a, the right time for us to be teaching you how to integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared or whatever technical things we're teaching you. Uh, and there's another type of learning which happens on campuses by virtue of the proximity to your fellow students. That's part of what you get at a university that you don't get uh, by watching an online video of your professors. Uh, said in other ways, there are, t there are times when the best thing we can do as faculty is to teach you something important, and there are other times when the best thing we can do is to show you the resources that you have convince you that you are capable of awesome things, and then get out of the way. Uh, yes, so as one sophomore put it last week, he said, I've never been around a group of people I've learned more from, which is disturbing to me again, because the set of people he's been around includes the talented faculty of Columbia University, uh, and yet here he's talking about his fellow students within the student group, the ADI. So uh, what was this sophomore doing that made him feel like he had never learned so much? Hacking. That's what he was doing. So let's talk about hacking. So first of all, I need to have a preamble to say what I'm talking about when we talk about hacking. And I'm not talking about breaking into things. Within the community of people who build in code, when they talk about hacking, they're using it in the original sense of the word uh, from the 50s, say. So here's a dictionary from 1959 uh, saying that a hack is something undertaken on bad self-advice, meaning it's not necessarily the right way of doing something, but it's a thing that you really want to do. Uh, and another definition of a hack is simply to produce a hack. And the hacker is one who hacks. Uh, so, in fact, that definition persisted all the way through the 80s. So I recently met Steve Levy, who wrote this book, Hackers, in 1984, about the hacker ethic and about people who build in code. He said two interesting things. One was that his publisher said, please don't call it hackers, not because people think hackers means breaking into things, but in the early 80s because, he said, no one knows what hackers are. 
So in the, in the early 80s, nobody knew the word hackers at all, let alone thought that it meant the wrong thing. The other thing that he told me was, he thought that to blame for this corruption of the definition of the word hackers around that time was this guy, Matthew Broderick, breaking into the computer and changing his girlfriend's gra games, uh, grades in War Games, a movie from 1983, The Summer. Uh, this was a long time ago, what, 30 years ago? You can tell it's a long time ago because Matthew had to put his internet into his phone. Now, almost immediately in 1983, hackers started pointing out that this was in totally the wrong usage. Here's an email from the internet, so you can find it, of hackers saying, please call up CBS and tell them that you're using our word wrong. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and that was the definition that persisted among technologists all the way through three years ago uh, when we created an organization to try to be useful to young students and try to encourage them to learn how to build and code called HackNY. So hopefully many of you recognize Akiva Bamberger, co-founder along with Ryan Bubinski of the ADI. This is a video where Akiva was helping us raise sufficient funds on Kickstarter for our first hackathon in spring of 2010. And that's really how HackNY was born, was via hackathons. Short structured events where students come together, thousands of students have come together to Hack and My Hackathons to learn that coding can be collaborative and challenging and fun. Uh, this is one from NYU. We've also been throwing hackathons here at Columbia. Uh, and students come together to learn about hard problems. Here's one from Davis Auditorium. And we also have a fellowship program, which is a structured internship program. Students work at startups during the day. They live together, which again, I think is a, is a type of learning which uh, it's difficult to replace with simply internet learning. Uh, here's a slide which shows Kathy Sun. I hope you know her, a Hack and My alumna and soon to be Columbia alumna, and also a lecture from Chris Dixon, one of our more famous alumni in the startup community. What has Hack and, I, Hack and My produced over the years? Eight hackathons at these two schools. Thousands of students have come to our hackathons to learn uh, that coding can be fun and collaborative. Uh, we've also had the Hack and Y Fellows Program, which at this point has graduated more than 100 alumni. These students have gone on to found their own companies. They've gone on to work at startup companies and build. Uh, that some of them have gone on to graduate school and to continue learning. Uh, what surprised us, though, is that many of these students have also gone on to be funders. So some of these students are working at venture capitalist firm and also performing a, a valuable culture brokering between the hacking community and the hustling community, as it's sometimes called, the set of people who make uh, building not only code but businesses possible. Uh, we also, of course, think it's very important that many of these students come back and are mentors to the next generations of Hack NY fellows. So as for the future of NYC, which is again part of this talk, uh, I want you to think briefly about the past of NYC. So when I came to New York City a long time ago, this is what New York City looked like. Suspenders, pleats, uh, there was internet with a slightly more sophisticated device for getting access to it. And so you may feel like, well, this is the way internet has always been. But uh, it has not been always that way. Uh, remember that New York City has, as Professor Ken Jackson puts it, been reinventing itself for almost 400 years. Right? And the people who are doing the reinvention are you, the New Yorkers. Right? You are now joining that community of people who are going to make New York City whatever it is. Wall Street used to be a wall, right? and now it is something else. Uh, all of these things are being made here in New York, right? and that is the challenge to you as you graduate from Columbia and leave Columbia and go into the world. You should remember that New York is waiting for you to reinvent it along with reinventing yourselves. This particular image made in New York is taken from a campaign by the city itself to remind you that there are hundreds of startups with thousands of jobs desperately trying to hire you, as in fact, as the last speaker illustrated. So the best way to predict the future of New York City, of course, is to build it. And so my, uh, my ask of you, my request of you as you leave Columbia and go out into the world, is whether you are going to be building a community, or you're going to be building a company, or you're going to be building in code, I beg you, beg you, to be a builder. Thank you very much. If you'd like to know more, there's a bit.ly bundle with, bundle with all of my references here. Thanks.